does have um, a few cavorts coming out, and these are very strong ships for the Klingons. He's got, uh, I see, a total of four on the board, and a pair more on the way. And somehow, through it all, the Dominion did not lose everything. So you can see that uh, Custodian is moving back into some destroyers, his A-20s. Try to get some bugs out, honestly, give him a little bit of cheap firepower. And what really should have been a decisive victory by the Klingons did not turn out to be that way. So, oh wow, and down here in the bottom we can see that Custodian is going into the uh, V-13 battleships trying to jump over all of the mid-game, uh, or the majority of the mid-game of the Dominion and just move into the early late game ships so we can see in the process that uh, Tyrus is also moving into his imperial yard looking to move up into the late game as well uh, but this re this map really so the thing about the late game you can roughly you can tell you can support a type a late game ship if you have uh, three moon pairs. Basically, your early game you can support constant production of uh, with one moon pair. You can you can support constant production of early game ships. Uh, mid game ships you need approximately two moon pairs, and late game ships you need about three. So the problem with this map it does not have a lot of resources, and so these players are going to be trying to field these middle and late game ships and that is actually going to cause them a lot of grief um, but we, we shall see how this battle turns out we got a pair of Vorchas uh, and just six of these uh, Kavorts now these Kavorts again are nasty nasty beasts in the 3-1 one um, and one of them managed to get taken down here's a Kavort, here's an S2 getting taken down Massive explosions. The S2s are getting beat to death. The the cavorts. Here's another cavort also getting tagged really nasty. Like um, one of these S2s moving into the nebula for some shield recharge really quickly. The one of these other ones getting tagged. About one of the Quebecs going to lose. The S2 taking a, a hit, taking two S2s down at the same time. Here comes it, a prototype waging in on the war. This prototype is an expensive, expensive uh, investment. It has no specials. The S2s are down and the Cavorts are smelling blood. They have this constructor. They have the battle. This is going to work very well. So this S2, this uh, V13 going to want to move away very quickly. Uh, nonetheless, it is going to be able to withstand uh, the, sh with the larger shield batteries. Going to be able to deal with it. The, really, this V13 needs to watch out. It was going to go after that one damaged ship, but you can see it's just taking a ton of damage in its shields. So the Klingon's going to just come in here and take out the expansion. This is really one of the the heart of uh, F FO Fleet Ops, or really any RTS, is that if you can cut the legs out from underneath your opponent, and by that I mean their economy, you can win the game. There are, there are few exceptions in which if you have a lower economy that you can win. So barring those few exceptions, uh, Tyrus has the advantage here. So Tyrus is actually going to move in. He needs to take out this Cavort here. Uh, there goes a the bug. He's going after the larger ships again, not, not focusing on smaller ships. So. Klingons trying to get out of this. This is odd, uh, an odd play for them. Um, the Dominion custodian needs to back off repair really quick. He is tr did manage to do what he looked like he was trying to accomplish, and he's trying to accomplish, giving himself enough time for this V13. So he is moving into these later game ships. We'll see if the Klingons are going to try to do move into these late game ships as well, or if they're going to stay with the middle game ships. So the Klingons very much, they really do have this game. So even though Custodian is going to be able to pump, have a the first battleship out on the, the field, you can see that he just doesn't have the numbers. And to a large extent, numbers are very, very important. 
the the S2s that he's pumping out. I let's see if he has the the special yet, and he does not have the special. So one of the really uh, one of the biggest benefits of these S2s is this Alpha Ketracel White, and you can see that it doesn't have it researched. So what he really should do is he should uh, research that Ketracel White. It'll give him. Uh, an extra boost of firepower right in the, when he needs it in the battle but as he is not doing it that is going to hurt uh, and we can see that custodian is hanging out in this nebula uh, using it as sort of a bit of a buffer shield but eventually that is not going to work in his favor as he is just not going to be able to s he's not going to be able to stay there forever so Tyrus still very slowly building up. He's got some of these uh, Chinook classes. These are long range. They have a, a nice little purple beam. <laughs> so you can do some long range uh, killing. The uh, something else that can potentially harm. So as soon as Custodian loses this nebula, the Klingons are going to be able to attack this technology lab from the nebula and that is going to be able to give them a lot of extra it's going to give them a little bit of extra benefit some just some base arrangement here these construction yards could be a little bit out of the way they are in front of the starbase relative to the entrance and so that makes these more uh, vulnerable to attack if you make them behind at least your opponent has to go around in the meantime, however, we can see that uh, Tyrus is gathering his uh, base killing fleet there. He's looking to really just uh, do a one swoop into this. And we can see that Custodian is hurting for resources in one form or fashion. He's only mining. He's not producing any offensive ships while his adversary is and that is going to hurt. So there's another Kavort on the way. There's another Vorcha. So three shipyards being produced versus no shipyards producing anything here. So Tyrus does have the upper hand. He really, really just needs to uh, cut, swoop in, make the killing blow. And in this game, this is a GG uh, unless Custodian pulls out some nice magic tricks, which is 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 very possible not to uh, berate custodian in any way he's played some decent hands here uh, but he really just at this point looks to be hurting for just resources he his legs have been cut out from underneath him he's been hamstringed and the Klingons have done a good job of that so Tyrus getting his fleet just huge fleet here a good 20 vessels here versus uh, what looks to look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only seven vessels. Uh, custodian trying to make his construction, uh, uh, his ship give himself a little bit of extra. Um, he's trying to re-expand, which is something you really do want to re-expand, but he has not a lot of, uh, not a lot of options here. Th this map is linear, even if it's curved. The, you're, you're going to get one entrance, you're going to go uh, one exit out of your base, so uh, he has no no way of moving into any expansion except this natural expansion, and that natural expansion is being um, is being pressured. It it there's just not going to be able to have any of the it just isn't going to be able to stand the Klingons here. So here the Klingons come in. The Cavorts moving in, Vorchaz moving in, 